I know this is going to be more interesting because it has to do with regularizing your neural networks and uh, whenever things go come down to writing a good loss function or you do data augmentation, things become interesting. The architecture, you need to do a lot of engineering and you need to have a good understanding of what type of architecture is going to help you push the state of the art in terms of accuracy over image net classification. We saw a sort of data augmentation last session. It was about mix up. This is another data augmentation that's really helpful, especially for images and classification. And the idea is actually very simple and, it, and it's actually very powerful. That's for image classification, the type of tasks that we have been doing so far. That's your image. You can take a box from your image and then uh, these pixels here, you can replace their values by the average value of your image. Another option is to replace them by random noise. So you pick a random portion of your image and then you mask it. And then one image in this case is turning out to be four other images. And now you're increasing the size of your data set by four. And we know that neural networks have more data set, bigger sizes for their data set. For person re-identification, re think of this application. You walk into a door and the door opens up for you automatically. Maybe you want to enter your company or maybe you want to enter the school. And then you don't need to swipe any cards. The system is going to identify you automatically and open the door for you based on your face, based on your clothing, based on uh, whoever knows what the neural network is doing, but it's doing the right thing. So these, these are really hard tasks to write the code for. Without deep learning, it's going to be extremely hard, if not impossible, to solve these sorts of tasks because the same person the next day might be wearing a different clothing. Okay, But then... This is about data augmentation. How do you actually do it? This is the actual source code for it. It's a few lines of code, 17 lines of code. What do you do? You take an image, this is this image, and then you want to return the erased image, the augmented image. Your image is gonna have a height and a width. The area of the image is gonna be W times H, that's your S, that's the input to the random erasing procedure. With probability P, you are not going to do anything. So you're just going to, actually with probability P, you're going to erase some portions of your image. With probability 1 minus P, you're just going to return your original image. And P is a hyperparameter that you choose. The area, the size of these boxes that you want to erase, you set a minimum value and a maximum value. These are also hyperparameters. Then the aspect ratio, should it be uh, long along the, H axis or shorter along the Y axis, these are gonna give you your aspect ratios. That one, you also have a minimum value and maximum value. These are hyperparameters, you choose them. You generate a random number, and then if that num random number is bigger than P, you don't do anything, you just return your image. Don't worry about this while true. I'm gonna explain it, why you need that. But then you take a look at your, the size of your image, and we know that each image is gonna have its own size. And then you say, I'm going to pick a random number from the ratio of the image between SL to SH that I want to crop. That's going to give you the area of this box. That's going to give you SE. For the aspect ratio, you're going to pick a number between R1 and R2 randomly. Now you know your area that you want to remove. You know the aspect ratio. From that, you can compute your height and the width of the box that you want to erase. And just to, be, to make sure that the area is gonna end up being correct, if you multiply HE by WE, that's gonna give you SE. And if you divide HE by WE, that's gonna give you your RE, okay? That's the aspect ratio and that's the area. Now you know the height and the width of this box. What else do you need? You need to know the point on the left because as soon as you know that, you're gonna go H steps to the right, W steps below, and then you're gonna crop that portion of the image. And those you're gonna pick randomly from zero to W and from zero to H. So it's gonna be a point randomly chosen in your, on your image. But then what is the problem? If you pick a point here, now I need to hear from you. If you pick a point here and then you try to erase a box that is bigger than the image, it goes out of the image, what's gonna happen? 
Okay, you shouldn't be able to do it. Okay, and that's why you need this while true thing. If you are within the bounds of your image, crop it. Otherwise, don't do anything. Okay, so you're gonna take care of that. And then you keep repeating this for while loop until it happens, until you return your cropped image. And then these values that you put here for your pixel values, you're gonna pick them randomly from zero to 255. And then you can actually do it for your red, green, blue. And that's why this has some red colors in it, some blue colors when you do it randomly, or you can actually put the average color here from your entire data set. Okay, so far so good. It's not only good for image classification, for person re-identification, it's good whenever you have an image. This one we are gonna cover later on. It's about putting bounding boxes around objects in our images. And you have multiple options to do data augmentation. This is actually your labeled data. For your labeled data, you have your input image and then you have the coordinates of the, these two boxes. One option is to randomly crop the entire image or randomly crop uh, in the box corresponding to the objects or doing both of them. So these techniques are useful even beyond classification for other tasks. And then at the same time, you can do random cropping. This is what we have been doing since the beginning with AlexNet. You can do that. On top of that, you can do random erasing because this is useful. You take your image, you shift it to the right, left, up, down, and cropping is basically equivalent to translating your image. And then we know that uh, classification should be invariant to these translations. If you take a doc, shift it to the left, this is still a doc. And then it's helping a lot. The random erasing is helping you reduce your error rate on CIFAR 100. And it's gonna help you reduce it across the board. Okay, perfect. There is a question in the chat. Does it matter what distribution we sample from to get our random numbers? So they are using random, this is uniform. This is the uniform distribution from zero to one, uniformly sample from R1 to R2 for your aspect ratios. For your area ratio, it's the same thing. But that's a good question. And that could be another hyperparameter that you can play around with. What happens if I sample from a uniform distribution, from a normal distribution? What's gonna happen? But I guess uniform is good enough for this. Or you can sample from multiple distributions. The choice of the distribution is another hyperparameter. Does that answer your question? Okay, perfect. So this is a very simple technique, but it's really powerful in reducing your error rates. And all of these papers that I'm covering, they pushed the state of the art at some point in the history. Like in 2020, these guys pushed the state of the art in terms of accuracy and error rate. The previous one was the same thing. And these are useful techniques for deep learning regardless of what you want to do. We do the similar thing when we do speech or text. We do a similar thing later on. The area ratio for the image with two objects is quite large compared to the total image size. You mean here, am I right? So do you select the ratio based on the object boundary or the image size? So this ratio that you see here, erasing area ratio, this is just uh, regardless of the size of your image. This is relative to the size. That's why you are multiplying it by the original size of your image. So this is regardless of the size. You pick these two numbers, SL and SH. Does that answer your question? Is S like the size of the total image or is it the size of the object that's outlined in blue or orange in that example? S, S here depends on what you want to do. It could be... For this input image, you're gonna have three S's. One S is gonna correspond to this blue object. Another S is gonna correspond to this orange object. And another S is gonna correspond to the entire image. And then you have multiple choices to make here. Do you want to base your decisions only based on the entire image? Or do you want to focus on individual ob objects and then do random erasing inside them? Or you can do both. Okay, perfect. Any other questions? So yeah, there is a comment in the chat. It's like a dropout on the input layer, but with some structure. Yeah, you can think of it like that. Here it's even before putting your image inside your neural network. And you're right, you can think of it as dropping some portions of your image. Perfect, any other questions? I guess it's a good time to stop. 
uh, I'll be around for those of you who have questions and for those of you who want to leave, have other classes, you can leave. Any other questions?